First of all, uh, Constantine, we would like to thank you for being with, uh, with us here today in ESNE with our students and everything. And um, uh, well, um, first of all, um, uh, you have been, we met many, many years ago, and I remember you were applying with uh, your portfolio for the Royal College of Art mm -hmm. uh, in a long time. Many things happened since then, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but in a way, you are a very multidisciplinary designer. And that's why we try to organize this interview from the fashion and the product design department. Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think for our students, it's very important um, to see how a designer can actually join from one discipline to the other. So one of, um, if you want, what we will do next is that we have made a selection of your works and, and you can talk about it. But let me do something. Only one question is if you have any memory of a prime idea of design if you have any memory right i mean this is something that uh, we all want to know um well yes of course i have a um, I, I i think i have a memory of when i realized that design was actually a profession it was a discipline um and uh, that was, I, I would say, it was quite late. I, I was probably 17, 18 years old. Um, um, and I, my mother came back from Milan, from traveling to Milan and brought uh, the Domus magazine. Um, probably most of you know Domus magazine. It's an Italian magazine, one of the classic design and architectural magazines. And, and this magazine, which was, um, you know, this must have been, uh, where are we, in, in probably 1980, um, was um, full, of, full of things that I didn't understand, but that were so exciting. Products, buildings, fashion, um, furniture, uh, people you could see that were talking about what they're doing. So... I think it was that this particular issue of the magazine um, was my discovery of design. And at that time, I'd, I, I got excited, but I, I didn't really know that that was um, going to be my own career. Uh, my, the beginning of my, my career was, in fact, um, becoming a craftsman in wood, making furniture. Um, First, I, I restored old furniture, which wasn't really what I wanted to do, but it, I guess it, it made me understand a lot of things about um, furniture, about construction, about material, about, um, well, today we talk about it as sustainability, things that are old, but they, they last over so many years. They're still looking good, even after so many years. Um, of use, but also in terms of their, you know, their beauty, their, um, of what they are. Um, after the furniture restoring, I, I really learned um, the skill of furniture making. Um, and I think it was then that I realized that um, I didn't, and, and or that I, I, I became more interested in the, the planning of what you make rather than the making itself. So um, you could now call this planning of what you want to make design. That's a design process. It's making decisions about materials, about form, about how to put things together, what it will become. All of this is a design process. At the time when I was trained as a cabinet maker, we didn't call it design, it was called planning or something. So that's how I really fell into this whole world. And I remember in the workshop, I, I, I was most, um, I was keen on using machinery. My, my apprenticeship was a very, um, very beautiful uh, place to, 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 you know, to learn the skill of making by hand and so on, but I, I became very interested in the machinery, the machines that could do better, faster, and in a repetitive way, what otherwise, you know, I, 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 I was trained to do by hand. 
and in a way um in in you know one could say that was the beginning of my interest in industrial design which is design but design for a kind of multiplication you design and develop a product which will then be produced um repeatedly um then i went to spain <laughs> <laughs> then I met Carmen. Uh, <laughs> I did lots of other things, um, uh, but as as you said, Carmen, I it was it was in Madrid uh, where I spent almost a year um, that I I knew I wanted to apply to the Royal College of Art to to design uh, to to study design, um, which I did, um, and. Um, I think the, the the Royal College of Art is is a is a is a great college. It has a big myth about it. It's a. Um, I, I I was very lost there. I, I it wasn't my it wasn't the the great time you'd expect because um, I tell you why because the the Royal College like probably other colleges uh, and. Um, suddenly you're, you're thrown into this um, kind of <laughs> mix of people that everyone is creative, everyone has great ideas, aspirations, ambitions, and so on. There was so much going on. I, I got very confused about what is it that I want to do? What is it that I'm good at doing? Where's my place in all this? Um, I, 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 for me, this, the, the study was, was almost the kind of, uh, total confusion and and trying to regain an orientation or a focus on on kind of my own project and i'm I'm saying this because i'm i even though i can't see anyone i guess i'm talking to uh, to um, a group of students here who are in this exactly in this position and if you feel like how i felt um, if you are confused don't worry <laughs> Um, I think it's quite natural and it's probably quite important. In retrospect, we always, we can always um, see the value in this. Um, you have to be confused in order to find a way out, to find a direction and focus. And um, well, I, I guess I, I was then, um, well, I, I was just uh, relieved when when college was over and I could just um start a career which was really by you know this is what we're talking about um, 1990 1990 yeah, 91 <laughs> is when you moved back to munich exactly and, so uh, we're talking so it, about 30 yeah. years ago 30 years ago three decades the world was different completely yeah, different it was the beginning of using computers mm -hmm. but it was much before there was an internet. Um, so it was all still very, you know, very analog, um, very slow. Um, very craft also, no? Yeah, very, you know, just simpler and uh, simple. I don't want to romanticize it. I don't want to say that was better. It was, uh, <laughs> it was different. It was different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, but I think it, it helped in, in the way that when I say it was simpler, it, you know, it enabled, it, it made a career start very simple because I didn't have to have a business plan. I didn't have to think about, you know, the complexity of what it means to be self, um, you know, self-employed, running my own studio. It just seemed all quite simple um i could you know i i i knew that there was I, there was a number i knew how much money i had to i had to earn per month in order to survive basically and that wasn't so much money therefore it felt quite okay to be able to to earn that money every month and survive and and get on and 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 do and start doing things um that's how it all started um, 
Okay, so so you definitely start to work on your home uh, just after just after the Royal College, no? You definitely More start or less. your own business, so like. So. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. yeah. I, uh, sort Very of, brave, uh, no? It's like. <laughs> but yeah, very brave. But it, like I said, it wasn't. I, I wasn't actually very courageous. It it was just it seemed so natural and so simple and the mm -hmm. risk seemed quite little then. Okay. Um, I did work, I mean, the Royal College, I have to admit, is a certain, that was the good thing about the Royal College. The Royal College is a platform. Um, uh, you know, it, I said there was no internet, but as a student of the Royal College, you had a certain visibility. There was a degree show and people came and they saw your work and, and then by, you know, somebody talks about what they've seen and says, oh, you should contact this and that person. My, my, um, um, my fortune or the, the, the kind of coincidence was that I, um, when I, when I was, a, when I was a student at the Royal College, I lived in a house, you know, in a flat chair and in that same building, Jasper Morrison had his office. That was, Pure coincidence. I met him um, because <laughs> we shared the same building, but then he became my tutor at the Royal College and I started working for him in some way. And it was Jasper Morrison who kind of made that my first contact with an industry, a very small company mm -hmm. uh, based in London at the time, SCP. But then that led to Capellini, uh, an Italian company, and that led to other things. So, and I, I guess um, that's how things work. I would say it still works like that today. Maybe, you know, on different scales and different speeds and different media. But I think as a, you start somewhere and then from somewhere you move, mm -hmm. you make a next step and from there um, something else happens and you, you, you take a next step. I think um, I said I, I had no business plan and I, I think even as an advice to most of you, I, I wouldn't say that a, a kind of very detailed business plan is not necessary to make a start. Things will happen differently anyway. You have to have some kind of idea like my naive calculation of how much money do I need per month to survive. And if you stick to those kind of rules, that means you're kind of safe and that gives you the freedom to, to just mm -hmm. carry on with what you want to do. Um, so Constantine, would you like to uh, go through some of the pieces yes. of your work? Because I think that the students would love to yeah. also know, you know, after this yeah. great introduction. Yeah. And uh, because many of them, I'm sure that they would like to go into a, a master degree or whatever, or training. So that was, that is very interesting. And uh, so I let you here with your super outstanding chair one and uh, you tell yeah. us whatever. Yeah, okay. so let's, the chair one is, a, is, is maybe just the right kind of uh, example, which now is, a, that's a jump uh, from, from, you know, the start of my career to, to this product, which changed my career. Um, mm -hmm. I remember at the Royal College, um, we all thought um, when you, start on your own, it will take five years. And five years are difficult and then, and then you made it. Um, that, that wasn't true at all. Uh, I, I think the first five years were not as difficult as we all thought, but it just took so much longer. I think it took 10, 15 years for me to actually, you know, to build up the, a career to a certain point where I felt, you know, I, I was kind of able to do the projects I really wanted to do. Chair One is such a project. Um, when it happens, you don't think about it that way, sort of. I, it was just a chair that we were doing at the time um, uh, and we believed in. And it was a, a, it was a, a project for an Italian uh, furniture company called Magis and Magis, at that time, they were um, mainly known for, for plastics, plastic injection molding. Uh, they had just done a great chair by Jasper Morrison, the air chair, which was a kind of, and still is a, a, a beautiful 
um, monoblock plastic chair. And I, I said to Majis, who wanted me to design a plastic chair at that time, I said, I don't, I don't think um, I, can, I can do anything that would um, kind of make sense after you have just done the air chair. And then it was Majis who came up with a completely different material for me to work with, aluminium aluminium die casting, which is a form of injection molding in aluminium. And that just the material just triggered the process because aluminium is a material that um, is perfect for outdoors for being, you know, because it doesn't rust. Uh, it's a material you can leave out in the rain and the snow and the sun. Um, so my project started to, you know, develop in my mind. What, what kind of chair? A chair for outdoor, a chair that is, you know, has to live up to the outdoor environment. And the outdoor environment, unlike the interior, the outdoor is much more rough. Um, uh, the materials are rougher, the climate is rougher, people, the public is much more you know, brutal in how they interact with a piece of furniture. You have the weather, temperature, rain, snow, dirt, um, people vandalizing stuff, you know, all of that. Plus you have uh, an, uh, the notion of comfort, which is different. If you think about a chair that you use outdoors, you sit differently on a chair that is outdoors than a chair indoors, you probably sit you expect less comfort because you, maybe you sit in a cafe, you want a certain comfort, but in a cafe you sit, I don't know, half an hour, probably no longer. Uh, um, so all of these kind of aspects just started to, to shape my idea of the chair we were working on. And the result of the chair that you see the image of it is really a, a result of a working process that, had, that didn't start with any clear image of what we wanted to do. The only starting point we had was the material and from the material, an idea about an outdoor chair and then constructing this chair, I don't know, from, from I don't know, just with the material. Um, what you see is a is a chair just uh, which is pure structure if you want it's it's um, not surface but um, construction the reason for that was is very simple um, i wanted to use um, very limited material sort of less material but so the the i i i could say that the the, the, the main reason for this kind of what became this grid is to, you know, by taking away material, cutting holes or, or leaving just uh, the, the, this net, um, I was re reducing the material that could get dirty, the material that could get either too cold or too hot, the material that could be vandalized. So in a way, very pragmatic, very hard decisions I made somehow they, they, they were driving the project and they created this, um, this chair, which um, we called chair one, um, simply because we couldn't think of a name, a good name. And then uh, it, was my, it was my first project for Majis for this client. So we called it the, it was the first project chair one. Um, chair one, we worked on it for, I think, um, we worked on the project for four years um, uh, and I, I think it's like in a, in a four, four year project, um, I'd say maybe six months at the beginning are the, the really creative, um, is the creative phase of the project where the project starts to st take shape and change and so on. All the rest of the time was really trying to make that work. Um, and uh, there was a lot of engineering going into this chair, a lot of trying, um, and trying also uh, implies failure, um, redoing things. 
So it's a long process. Industrial design, this discipline I'm talking about, is um, a discipline um, that requires a lot of kind of patience and endurance. It's not something you just do quickly, uh, a sketch, an idea, uh, somebody will make it perfect, finished. It's not like that. It's, it's really um, it's a project you, you, yeah, you have to kind of you develop things with time. Time is really important. It's an important kind of aspect of, of the project. Um, and so, I mean, it doesn't have to be four years. Um, but I would say, from my experience, uh, projects take at least a year and a half to, in order to be, you know, developed properly and 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 to be ready for the market. Uh, I said that this project changed my career. Um, well, it did um, not immediately because when the first chain, chair, when when the chair first came out, people were really irritated by it. Um, um, thinking that, well, what, what is this? Is this a chair? It's, it's a joke. You can't really sit on it uh, and, and so on. Um, it took uh, probably almost two years before uh, an architectural office um, uh, started using the chair in a, in a big project, uh, in a museum project in San Francisco they used the chair for the cafeteria, quite many of them. And, and the pictures of this museum in San Francisco, the De Young Museum, went through the press and suddenly gave my chair a kind of, um, uh, the, the, the kind of, uh, the, it, it made my chair real. Sort of people started seeing my chair in this building, which they believed was real. And if these architects choose my chair, then my chair must be real and must be a real product. It was really, we could see in the, the kind of, in the sales um, statements, how the chair just, I mean, there were a few kind of um, enthusiasts who would buy the chair, but suddenly from the publication of this museum, the chair started selling in different numbers and has been, has continue to sell um, quite constantly in, you know, they're not huge numbers, but the chair is now, it's, it's more than, it's almost 15 years or something that the chair has been on the market and it's become recognized. Uh, it's become almost a, a kind of a, a certain classic and people don't question the chair anymore in the way they did when it first came out. Um, That's quite maybe, amazing, yeah. <laughs> So now, Constantine, uh, would you like to talk a bit about your contribution into fashion? And I don't know if you would prefer to talk about the Prada project or this one or... Um, let's, how, how should we do this? Yeah, let's talk about this next slide. And this is, um, Aeons is a, a very small label, a fashion label. Uh, based in Munich, where I used to live and have my studio, not anymore now, I'm, I now live in Berlin. Um, Aeons um, is a small fashion label that has a very clear uh, kind of program. Uh, and that program is uh, to make a fashion um, or clothes um, with a, um, very uh, ecological, sustainable material, materials and processes. Um, and the fashion itself, um, I mean, I, I think it's correct to call it fashion, but not, um, not in the sense that um, it is um, clothes that are just fine for one season and then they the, the 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 clothes are outdated the 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 idea is that it the the fashion is kind of let's say fairly simple and almost you know in 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 the way it um in what it is for the user it becomes a kind of standard something you can wear um almost every day or for different occasions and certainly in different seasons and over 
many years. That's the idea. So the, the, the clothes are very well made. The, the, there's a lot of attention to the quality of how they are made. We paid a lot of attention to trying to make the, the, the clothes, yes, of course, very contemporary, but not in that kind of way that it could outdate too quickly. And the materials we're using are very, um, are very um, they're either recycled or made from organic um, fibers. It's very interesting for me coming, coming from, you know, uh, this is an excursion into um, a kind of a field or a domain which is not my own at all, fashion. I'm, I'm, I'm following fashion as, as, a, as a, you know, out of interest, but I'm, I, 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 I don't know the fashion industry. And I was intrigued just how actually the materials you have, um, fabrics, um, have seem very advanced in comparison to what we are working with in industrial design. I think that the, the, the technology in fabrics has really, is, is already now on an incredible level of, um, you know, materials that are made of recycled materials uh, or organic, but that have a very high performance. So they're really good materials. Plus they, they also, they feel nice. They have a good touch or they, you can color them in a good way, the, the kind of in my industry, recycled materials are interesting, but they always come with a, a kind of slight, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, you only get them in certain colors, and the colors are usually not, you know, the, the very muddy colors, uh, or or you have to accept certain defects in materials and so on things like that. Uh, I, I think it's also changing now, but I, I'm, I'm, I just want to make that point that I, through the, my project with Aeons, I was, I was really um, kind of amazed how, you know, how great uh, the offering is of, of materials to use in, in, this, um, in this way. Um, just, uh, yeah, can, can you jump to the, even the next slide, the Pra, I think is, that's the Prada project. So, yeah. This one. Um, yeah. Just before my, my work with Aeons, we had, I had been invited by Prada to work on a project, a singular project. Um, um, it's, it was clearly a, just a marketing um, kind of project, but that's fine, no, no problem with that. Um, an invitation to, um, to collaborate with Prada, which is fantastic, of course, because you you can kind of you step behind the the facade of such a such a brand and you meet the people there fantastic very nice people uh, very skilled people craftsmen uh, very knowledgeable plus you have the 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 incredible machinery of such a brand behind you and and doing a singular project like this one was basically a very a kind of um, a very open brief uh, an open invitation to do whatever I wanted to do using a particular material, which is um, a, a nylon material, which um, is um, kind of um, it's very important for the for the for the brand for Prada because um, most of you will probably know that Prada's um, kind of um, a big success story where bags made of a nylon material and that probably happened more or less 90s, in the yeah. in the 90s um it was a nylon is a is a it's a it's a, a synthetic material very tough very um a quite, a quite very nice material and, and what prada made was change that material which is a very industrial material into a, a kind of high fashion material so um, they made they started making bags from nylon that before that you would have only um, made from beautiful leather, for example. I thought that that um, sort of when you know they invited me to do, to work on this project um, using this material, I did want to make a reference to to their own history of of making bags, but I also wanted to make a reference to Prada being a, a, a kind of a, a fashion company, a, a company making clothes. 
So my project in a way is a, it's a bit of a hybrid uh, between a bag and a piece of clothing. So a bag that you wear. And in fact, I did two projects. One was a, a kind of a vest uh, um, with lots of bags on it. Uh, and the other one, the, the one pictured here, which is my preferred project, the one I like um, a lot, is a, a kind of... Um, uh, uh, what was the word? Um, uh, now I, I don't remember the even the uh, an I apron. Was, I was really apron. wondering that you got inspired in the fisherman bags, right? No, the the the, 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 the first project was the vest, and and it was oh. the the fisherman's vest. So uh, people going fishing sometimes they're, they're wearing a, a vest, and they have lots of pockets to keep stuff in in these pockets that they they need for fishing and. Josef Beuys, the, the famous German artist, um, uh, he used to wear a fisherman's vest as that was almost his uniform. And I, 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 my, I, I think my first reply to Prada at the beginning of the project was I sent them a picture of Josef Beuys wearing his fisherman's vest. And I said, I would like to do that in your material. Uh, and that's how we started. Uh, and then from there, I, I then expanded the project to something because I felt the fisherman's vest was just, you know, a, a kind of, I was just changing the material of something that we already knew. So I wanted to actually create, create something different and, and then design this apron, um, which is basically a thing like, you know, people like a cook has an apron, uh, a piece of cloth, you, you wind around your waist. So I have a, a belt, a, a beautiful uh, Prada belt um, with an apron made of this black nylon and lots of pockets. And you can imagine wearing it when you travel, you wear it when you work uh, to keep certain things. You, I don't know, it's a, or, or it's a pure fashion item as well. Um, uh, it was a great experience uh, working with people uh, inside Prada. And I guess that's a... Um, it's a it's it's also something I'd, I'd like to, to bring up in this conversation that um, as an industrial designer or industri designer also with clients like Prada it is an, a, a huge privilege working with partners with with companies with uh, people who are experts in their fields who have knowledge there they can sort of it's it's a it's it's a learning it's always a these projects are always um, incredible learning experiences and, and, and in that way they become inspiring. Um, the project that you're looking at here in this picture turned out that way because we, were, we had the support from people at Prada and because I was in dialogue with them and we could kind of discuss certain ideas and solutions and um, using references from their archives and all of this is so, um, so, so, so kind of for me, so much part of this profession and the job I'm doing and why I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying doing it. Very good. So I'm not, uh, oh, the, 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 the point I, I do want to make, I'm, I'm not a fashion designer. I think it says that in your... I said your very, class fashion in the poster. In, in your okay. very nice poster, um, you say I'm an industrial designer and fashion designer. I'm not a fashion designer. I, I have huge respect for real fashion designers. I know it's a discipline that is, um, you know, it's a different discipline on its own and, and, and people are doing amazing work that I could never, ever uh, do or... I can I can tap into it with the help of companies such as Aeons or or Prada. Very good. Okay. So where do you want to go next? Um, let's let's go to the next slide. In fact, which is uh, a slide. Um, I don't like the image of this. Um, it's it's a it's a, the, the, this slide is a, product. No? Yeah. yeah. This is. Um, this, <laughs> It shows a watch uh, that I designed, and in fact, I'm I'm wearing this watch. Uh, um, yeah. Why I don't like this image is because I think the 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 watch I'm wearing is is the nicer one. Uh, mm. <laughs> but this is uh, not is, design, is the same, isn't it? Is the same product. Uh, there's okay. just little details. Uh, okay. The one yeah. we're looking at is polished. Mine is matte. Okay. The one okay. we're you looking have to at. You send us a picture, okay? <laughs> <laughs> 
the one I'm, we are looking at is the, the female version and I have the male version. I think it's ridiculous to still think in these terms. Mm. Why, why, is, and... yeah, why, why would a, a woman's watch be smaller than a man's watch? Well, um, uh, it could be that um, someone prefers to wear a small watch and the other a bigger one, but that could be male or female. Uh, anyway, um, I, I think the, 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 just that image is the slightly, slightly the wrong one, but I, it's a beautiful project. Uh, it's, a, it's a watch um, uh, for a company called Rado. Rado is a, is a Swiss company, a Swiss um, watch maker. They're part of the Swatch group. Um, if you work with companies like that, you enter a whole different world again now we've talked about the fashion world before about furniture now you're entering this world of watchmakers it's a it's kind of uh, and all of these you know these little uh, worlds are worlds of experts but also freaks um, they are freaks making making watches and um, but and, and they're all you know i mean swiss watches are famous in the world and and it's really a, a kind of a few villages quite in in probably a, a, a kind of in a within a radius of 50 kilometers to each other where all of them are rolex and um, swatch and tag heuer you name it um, they're all there rado also so you have the this kind of concentration of knowledge about one particular product a watch in the in these places and um, I mean, they all have to find their own niche and, and, and trademark. Rado's trademark is the material. They make watches from ceramics. And that may sound crazy because you, you know ceramics from your cup of coffee um, or a plate. Uh, and when you, it falls on the floor, it breaks. Uh, but ceramic is, is one of the most high-tech materials there is, it's an organic material, but it's, it's, you know, there are ceramics of different, very different grades. And um, just think about the space shuttle, this kind of spaceship that brings people into space. The whole of the space shuttle is clad in ceramics because ceramics is the, the toughest material, the material that resists the change of temperatures um, in space, but also, you know, different things hitting the aircraft and so on. So um, Rado started investigating into ceramics as a material for making a watch because it is actually tougher, stronger, harder than metal. So um, uh, there, it is so compressed, uh, so dense that um, it doesn't break, but it also it doesn't scratch. Um, it is in a way lighter than metal. Um, it is ceramic changes temperature in a much nicer way than metal. Metal would also adapt to temperature, but wearing a ceramic watch as opposed to a, a metal watch is um, the watch has seems to always have the right kind of touch or temperature, whether it's in winter or summer. It's very, it's, it's just really very nice, which is one reason why when this watch came out, I just started wearing it and I don't want to wear any other watch now uh, because, of, because of this material. <laughs> so nice. yeah. um, of and, course, and, the material... And all like, those, all those spot, yeah, sorry. No, no, I have a question, as, the layer, layer. As with, as with the, the chair one that I talked about, uh, material... Um, kind of creates a lot of conditions for a project or even you could say restrictions, limitations, problems. But I think it's, it's kind of one of the, the challenges I always enjoy is understanding what these restrictions and challenges and conditions are that are kind of given by the, by the material and the technology that comes with the material and then working around it. With ceramics, we had to respect a lot of kind of um, just um, restrictions of how you can mold the, the pieces 
a minimum radius, a maximum radius, um, uh, thicknesses, all sorts of things. But uh, I always see them, you know, I, I always see these restrictions as they're also opportunities. They're also guidelines. They, they help you design things. Um, I think the po impossible design project is one where you can do whatever you want to do because there are no limitations, no, no, no rules. Um, 3D printing has that problem, I think, that you, you can 3D print anything you want. Maybe, you know, maybe there's a restriction of size now, but in, in years to come, we will even have no more restriction in size. I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's also another creative process, but it's actually very difficult to, to, to come to terms with that, this kind of no limit. I think sometimes, or very, in, in, in my understanding, limitations are interesting. Turn them into an advantage. Turn them into something that, that helps you in the design process rather than make you frustrating. Sorry, you, you wanted to ask a question. No, I, no, no, it was a very technical, it was a very technical question, is it? And, and you somehow you answer to it because you, you, you talk about mold. No? Okay. So okay. I, I guess that all those pieces are made by, by, by cast, one kind of ceramic yeah. casting, no? Yeah, so yeah. it's a ceramic casting. And even, even the, um, you know, even the, the small, I don't know, you, you probably can't see it, even the small, um, very small, uh, parts of the, the links of, of the, the armrest, um, yeah. the wristband are, this is all ceramics. Um, amazing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite amazing. Yeah. How are we Good. in time? So Maybe we, 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 need to, we, we yeah. need to speed up a bit. <laughs> yeah, so tell us, where do we you should... want to go next, Constantine? <laughs> let, let me just, uh, th I think the next project is, is a nice one. Um, and I, I try to be quick on that next one. It's, it's a nice one because, no, sorry. No, the, the one, this one. Okay. This, one. Um, this is- uh, This is wonderful, yeah. This is, a, I call it a chair, but it's, it's, it's much more than a chair. It's, well, it's something to sit on, but you can also um, use it. Let me, sorry, sorry Constantine, just, just one point about this, 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 this piece. No? We, we had a chance to visit with a student, uh, the Vitra, Vitra showroom that we oh, have in Madrid, oh, yeah. and we really, played with it, no? We, we spent a lot of time with it because there was like a yeah. four or five of those pieces and uh, it was very playful yeah. and very funny and very intuitive too. So they know the product in person. I mean, that's, that's, that's good. You and, tell us about it. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, I don't, I don't know, um, maybe your experience was when you first saw it, you didn't know what it is. It's, it's an abstract no. thing. It's a big piece of plastic, uh, mm -hmm. but then there's a handle and the handle at least it gives you the, it invites you to, okay, so I, I, I pick up, I pick up this thing by the handle then you realize, okay, this is not so heavy. It has two surfaces on two levels. And we all know, I mean, any staircase is also a chair. We can sit on it. Um, um, basically I, I'd say very quickly, you find out that this, could be a chair, it could be a stool, it could be a chair and a table, it could be the support of a tabletop, it could be many different things. And that's what's the intention of this project, um, which we designed for Vitra, for um, a company primarily known for their, as, a, as an office furniture company. And um, I'm, I'm working with them on, on, on kind of office projects uh, and in, in the sense of new offices what what is in how how much have workplaces offices changed um, because of the, diff, the the new tools we have the digital tools mobile devices we are not kind of chained to a particular our desk to a particular workstation anymore we can move around in the office have meetings very spontaneous um, um, the, the idea of a flexible office, of an open plan office where a lot of things are happening in parallel or one after the other, changing, teams are changing. Um, 
all of this was the, the kind of the context for, for designing this. And it's, um, it's called stool tool. So it has the two words on in it that are interesting to me. It's a, there's a stool in a, a chair, but I'm calling it a tool. So it's, it's really something, a tool is something that, you know, you, you use for something you it's, it's really a tool stands for yeah use me use me for for whatever you want to to to, <laughs> to use me for and I, i'll help you but with that um and maybe let's jump from this uh to um over the next slide again and the next slide so this one may day is probably the earliest design in this um, kind of presentation. It's from 1999, uh, a lamp called Mayday. And I always considered this lamp to be a tool. It's, it's a lamp because there's a light bulb in it and it gives light, but a lamp in the form of a tool because I can, again, I can use it. There's a handle, there's a hook, which tells me I can hang it where I want it to hang. Um, there's a long cable and two spikes to wind up the cable. It's made of plastic. The, the cone is a diffuser for the light, but it's also a protector for the light bulb. So I can, you know, it, if it falls on the floor, it doesn't, it protects the light bulb from breaking. Um, it's also where the, you know I can I can stand the the lamp on this reflector. I can take it outside. It's um, I, it's it's not perfectly waterproof, so I can't take it outside and leave it outside. But it you know a, a few raindrops or, or or humidity wouldn't do it any harm. It's it's a lamp that when when I designed it, I I felt um, I was kind of inventing a new typology of a lamp. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a lamp that was, that, that was following an existing typology um, and therefore had a, a kind of prescribed function uh, or, or place where it would go. I think this thing as it is now, it's uh, because it's more like a tool, I would say it can go anywhere. It can go in your kitchen, yes, and in your bedroom, but it can also go in your garage and on your balcony or garden uh, into a restaurant uh, or a restroom, uh, whatever, into a child's room. Uh, that was my idea. And I, I, I can say now, you know, this is again, um, what is it, 20 years ago? Um, um, it's been... Uh, it, it has been used in in all of these ways and and even many more ways than I would have ever been able to think um, and interesting that um, in those last twenty years uh, the lighting industry has changed completely from the incandescent bulb to LEDs or OLEDs even um, but and and we have discussed with the the producer, an Italian company called Floss, we have discussed updating the, the lamp to an LED um, uh, light source. And in the end, we've always kind of come back and said, no, let's leave it the way it is. It's, it's so basic uh, and, and, and so simple and a, a kind of E27 kind of screw fitting light bulb is something you can still buy everywhere in the world today if it breaks you can replace it it still has a, a very it still has that kind of um, um, notion of or, or quality of, of of something very basic simple uh, something that if it breaks you repair it you um, um, that's what I, I like about it and, and Constantin one general question about this project and all the others I mean when you get into a product in, uh, of this type, is there any, any uh, requirement from, from, from a client, I mean, any context, any, any briefing, any specification that you have to follow? Or in that case, especially, did you have a lot of freedom or, 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 or do you start from one point or one? 
I can um, I can say probably probably eighty percent of my projects have no briefing, no briefing in the sense that the client tells me what it is they need or what it is they would like me to work on. Um, but in these eighty percent um, of projects, uh, in a way, the client creates the context because there is a client and I, I know who am I working, designing this for and it's a company, you know, the people, there's a history to the company, a collection of already existing projects. Um, and for projects I'm doing for clients that I've been working on, you know, over years, then even my own projects that I've done in the past create part of that context. So um, it's um, sort of whenever there is no briefing, it's not like we are sitting together, the client and myself and thinking, so what, what do we do? No, but usually there is always, there's always a, a kind of, it's always uh, some kind of noise um, that where we think, ah, this is interesting. Let's do something here or there. Um, so I, th I think um, it's a, it's a, maybe it's a, it's a kind of form of privileged um, situation that I'm not given a brief, but I can produce my own brief um, that creates a stronger authorship, uh, of course, in the project. Um, and I'm kind of, I can at least try to do all the things I'd, I'd love to do. I'm, I, you know, follow my own interests. Um, mm. But I, I also, I also work on, on projects where there is a, um, a clear briefing. Actually, let's jump to that next slide. And, and that is a good example for a project where there was a briefing. Mm -hmm. um, and the briefing was to design a bar stool. Um, uh, and it was at a time, and this is um, kind of now a furniture specific talk, but it was a time when there were two very successful pro new products in the market. One was a, a stool called Bombo, produced by Magis, which was the first one to have a, a gas piston for height adjust uh, to, to make the stool height adjustable. It also used an interesting plastic technology, the Bombo stool. And there was another stool called the, um, I'm not quite sure the name, uh, a stool by uh, 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 a couple of Japanese uh, designers called Azumi. Um, and the stool, I don't know the name, for, for a company called La Palma. Another stool, a very successful, a stool that had a beautiful kind of outline of a, a metal frame outlining the seat and going down into the into the footrest and so on so in in this situation the market had two very successful new products um it was almost kind of difficult to add another one um and we kind of tried to think hard what could be the you know, what could make the difference of our product against these other two. Both stools that I talked about, both, both these other stools had gas pistons for height adjustment. So this is something we, we mm. thought we, we don't really need. But um, we, th we, just, we, we, well, we, we came up with this very simple discovery that at that time there were, there were no stools stackable Today, and when we designed it, most chairs that you design, you design them to be stackable, not only because of the restaurant using them and stacking them in the evening, but also because of um, the kind of uh, the, 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 the kind of space efficiency in the warehouse in shipping. If you, if you ship one chair in a box, you ship a chair in a box plus a lot of air. If you can stack four chairs into a box, you you're much more efficient. So stacking is not only about the end user, um, but also um, mm -hmm. about the logistics in, in the whole system from production. And so uh, the, the picture is good. Uh, if you look at it, it's a stool that stacks and it became a real um, kind of that, that 
became a, a kind of really strong argument for our stool um, and, and and made the stool fairly successful. Um, there was a strong briefing um, for this. It didn't include the the, the, the kind of stacking um, mm -hmm. uh, element, but uh, I think any briefing you get, even the super precise briefings that sometimes you get from clients, they get changed over the process of the project because only once you start working on the project, you encounter or all the the kind of the real issues that there are and and it's very important even to 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 be flexible and to do to change uh, the briefing um a briefing is never just a, a kind of a dogma um it, you know this is what we want you have to stick exactly to what this what it says it's it's a kind of it's uh, a briefing is a, a kind of a, a a form of orientation, it's a starting point, um, a guidance, uh, but then things do change. And, and here we changed two things, that the stacking became was a change and we changed material. When we started, we had no idea that we could even um, do uh, the, this project as a plastic molding. This is a, 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 a monoblock plastic molding. It comes out as an entire uh, plastic molding and there was something when we started the project we didn't even think it was possible but over the the course of the development we discovered that there was a way for us to 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 use the technology and um, and, and make it possible is it with gas inside or with a, um, yeah, it a could metallic have, structure yeah it could have been gas inside um, um, but that would have made the mold quite a lot more expensive. Mm. Yeah. And we just, uh, it was just trial and error. We, we said, well, what happens if we just um, um, inject the, the section solid um, with just a lot of pressure? <laughs> and it kind of worked. So if if you if you, amazing, if, you the, if you cut the if you cut the yeah if you cut the the leg or um, um, you'd see it's solid and it may have a, a few wow. kind of bubbles of air in there which doesn't uh, we don't we don't mind in fact it would be mm -hmm. even amazing if the inside could be could have a, a sponge like um, or bone like structure but um, it's it's mm -hmm. near enough that that's more or less the com the, the concept. No. Um, so um, I feel we've we've talked about a good cross section of projects. Unless you you feel we've left any particular one out that you you would like to to speak about or have any questions. What do you think? We, we don't hear Carmen. She has. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah. Carmen, I don't know. <laughs> she cut off uh, her microphone. We don't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was silent. Sorry. Uh, I was... There you are. There you are. Okay. No. Not again. Okay, now you can hear me, and uh, I would like to um, um, have a question from the fashion department. I, I don't know if it's the department or some of the students. Is how long does it take? Uh, because you said that you take for a project almost like one and a half years, yeah, well made and everything. So how long do you experiment with the materials in the creative process? Um, but depends, but um, usually the, the kind of the, all the material research is, is done quite at the beginning of a project because the material, as I said, will inform the, the, the whole project, how it takes shape and so on. And I think the real material, the, the investigations we make into the material, the research, is probably, I'd say the first three months for sure, maybe uh, the first six months of a project. Um, and by that time, I think we have to be, we have to come to a point of understanding the material in such a way to know that this is feasible, this we can use this material, it is, it is a way to go with this material. 
So it's quite, therefore it's it's quite natural that this the the playing around the experimentation with materials at the beginning of the project, but at that at at some point, um, also it has to be finalized because you can't you can't you know keeping the material question open for too long would you know would drag a, a kind of big risk into the project over a long time because okay. you don't want to be in a, in a position at the, at the at the end of a project realizing oh um <laughs> the, it doesn't work from a material point of view um Okay, and uh, I have another one here, and is do you think that the digital um, media is uh, making the designer closer to the uh, craftsmanship um, that uh, from before or something or not? Because we, as you said before, with the um, uh, with the three D, uh, you can make almost anything, you know. So sometimes it's a uh, like too much. So do you think that people are trying to, to in a way, come back to more craft, um, uh, I don't know how to explain. I, th I, th I, think, I, 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 I think I understand your, your question. Process in a way, you try to, to look for inspiration into that, or do you think that people are using the, all the new technologies to... I, I, th I think you, you actually see two tendencies. So one tendency is, is that, you know, in, in parallel to the, the digitalization of, you know, our tools and, and, and possibilities, you see a trend towards, um, you know, the kind of real craftsmanship again, um, you know, using people that have hand skills and, 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 uh, and so on. Um, it's an, I, I think it's a very interesting trend that, um, if I think back uh, 30 years ago when, um, it, you know, we, we thought craft was dying because, um, because nobody was able to afford craftsmanship. Um, but also there was no, there was no interest in the, 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 that kind of quality and beauty. And, and that really has had an, a, a, a revival. Um, maybe it's a revival that is a reaction to the, digitalization on the other hand. But I think that um, uh, the digital tools and the possibilities we have of digital, um, you know, the digital um, make, you know, making is in a way also a form of craftsmanship. It's, it's you know, because we have to understand uh, these new tools, just like a craftsman has to understand their tools and what they can do with it. Um, I think now we are this generation that has to understand um, digital tools, software, um, but also related to that, the hardware, um, as you know, a, a new form of craftsmanship, or so many new forms of craftsmanship. And I, I think that's very interesting. How, um, what, what, what is, um, you know, the, the the potential I think is incredible. Um, Okay, so Fred, I don't know if you have any questions from the from your side. No, no, I don't even know where have those questions. Uh, <laughs> I would love to <laughs> to be able to read some of the students, but uh, I didn't. I don't have access to them, so I'm a little bit uh, lost. But uh, uh, no, anyway, uh, I think all what you said is 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 so inspiring because it's it's definitely what we try to transmit. Mm -hmm. to uh, to our student every day you know? and, and 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 i love the story of domus because personally I, I was in love with that with that magazine too and it was but today it's true that the information is is everywhere and is is is, is even a bit afraid you're afraid about it you know? because there's too much information everywhere you know? and uh, i don't know personally uh, uh, you said so so many interesting things that <laughs> i don't have any specific question actually but I would love to, to receive some of the students, if it's possible, I don't know, through the chat or, and try to translate to, to them to you, uh, if let, that let possible. Me, I don't know, Carmen. Yeah. Let, let me yeah. pick up on, on this, uh, what, what you just said again, uh, the, uh -huh. this thing about the Domus magazine and, and uh, you know, mm. how, you know, back then it was the, the almost, the, it was 
became a bible for me because it was the only thing i had it was for me too uh, yeah. nowadays yeah. like you say um the inf you you get information um everywhere and uh, and uh, <laughs> and and plenty of it and and uh, you know how and that makes it kind of well it's it's probably something 30 years ago everybody would have dreamed about because uh, you know when resources are limited you think you, you dream about just having more access more easy access to a lot more information now we are in this position and it becomes um a kind of uh, suddenly becomes a burden or a problem it's sort of there's an overflow of information and um, how do we navigate through this how do we find any any kind of uh, uh, how, how, how do we make sense of all the stuff we are we, we are seeing and how and not only to students but also to you know I, I think it still affects me in the same way uh, with even an experience of of, 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 of a professional career how do we um, keep our cool in all this how do we how you know how do how, how do I avoid you know, becoming confused, like what I said about the Royal College uh, when I was a student there, just, just, I mean, that was a little bit that situation of suddenly the Royal College meant there was so much information, so much interesting information coming from all sorts. It just simply confused focus, yeah. And uh, And I mean, the same situation you have with media today, you could say, and it's, it's, um, it's a real discipline, um, you know, trying to, you know, find your way through this, create your own filters or, or being selective. But um, I think th 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 an, a no solution to this is to say, I, I don't want to follow the news anymore. I don't read uh, anymore. You know, I, I often enough, I hear, hear people talk that way. I think that would be a huge mistake. Information is important. Uh, knowledge is super important. Um, uh, so, so do do get, you know stay informed, um, read, uh, look at things, um, build up a lot of knowledge, but be be selective, be critical, and and um, and and well, follow your own kind of senses, intuition of you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, the the best form of learning is that you know you learn things that you're interested in. You know, you follow follow your follow your um, um, your enjoyment um, then then you you, you 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 learn very very easily um, yeah. yeah no definitely yeah. yes it's a fight that we have every day with the student because there is as you said so many information and you have to to be selective no? and, and to know where to look at and to fall in love with some maybe some blogs and some specific place and 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 then fall in yeah, that, that, that's, that's the deal that we yeah, fight every yeah, day. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and uh, I mean, that's an, another thing. I mean, uh, the, you know, since you mentioned the, the blogs, and um, I mean, they're, they're super important and they are a form of reality. We all know that, but they are not reality. This is, you know, the, their reality is a, a kind of digital, virtual reality, it's, it's just an image. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yeah. and, and the speed by which, you know, the, the, they get updated also tells you just how just mm, in a way unreal all of that is. Um, exactly. You know, it, it's, it's great to be, you know, to, to be featured on these blogs and it's, it's a form of, you know, you can, mm. you can celebrate it, it's success <laughs> and it creates a visibility, but that's not yet your... Um, your career. Um, Definitely not, yeah. Now you have to be curious, you have to test the product, which is always amazing when you can sit yeah. on, this, on the seat you've seen on, on the picture, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and visiting any, any store or whatever is, is always uh, yeah. so inspiring. I have a question from, from, from a student that is so long, uh, Amaya, uh, wrote to <laughs> me and he said, Ken, I don't know where to take it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are you, pattern? Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe Carmen, if you have an, uh, another one, uh, no, let's go for Amaya because Amaya has a few questions. Amaya, Amaya it's crazy. You wrote, me, you wrote me like, uh, okay, where? 
<laughs> okay, let's let's try to do it quickly. But uh, right. what are your patterns, tendencies, or recurring sensibility when you polish and play with details in objects to refine the harmony of the object form towards the end of its development? I'm sorry, but uh, it's a bit confusing. Uh, let me try to answer. I, I, I'm not sure yeah, let, let, let's I, I understood <laughs> exactly, but the, the, the few things I, I kind of pick out was this, this kind of this thing about details, I, I think it's important. Details are important. Um, um, and uh, th there's a saying, you, you, need, you need to master the details. You have to really, you know, un uh, go into, into, into the detail of, of things. But in the end, I, I, I always think, uh, you know, the, the, the best, Kind of projects in in the in the sense of end 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 products end results are those that seem to have no details that they are you you read them as as an entity as well then whether it's a chair or a jacket or um, uh, whatever it is you, you wouldn't if, if somebody would talk you, you'd have a conversation about let's say a chair and that that conversation should not be about the little screw on the side or the the beautiful i don't know the, the connection between two materials these are the screw on the side and the connection between the materials are details we need to work on as designers during the process but i would say in the end they they do not matter for the for for the for the overall thing the overall thing mm -hmm. is a chair and a chair that is overall I don't know, pleasing and comfortable and, um, I don't know, ha ha, you know, in the end, um, a product is about the kind of the, the bigger issues than the details, but the details are important. I'm not sure if that was the, the right answer to the question, but uh, I, I, I guess, yes, yeah, somehow she get what, uh, yeah, definitely is, yeah. Uh, I guess it was part of the answer, definitely. Um, yeah, I'd love, maybe I can add something more because I, I, I loved I loved reading that about one of the interviews that you had in the, in the past. I think it was with Context Gallery uh, last year, uh, and you said something like, "Good design is not only solving a problem; it's more than functionality. It is an object you interact with, you identify with, you emotionally and sensually uh, you have a, a, or can have a sensual quality, and uh, and that is what you're always looking for when you're designing." products uh, not only functionality just answer to, uh, to 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 function but 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 create a different kind of contact and and, and with with the product no mm. uh, maybe if you can tell us a bit more about this uh. well um, I, I, um, I think what I'm I'm trying to say here is that the 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 um, <laughs> it's open question sorry no, the, the, <laughs> open question. but it, i i think the point is i would actually uh, in in a, in a simple way i'd say um the 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 emotional quality of a, of a product is also a function so if it's, yeah. it's easy to say so functions is of course how something works and performs and, and so on and we all agree that that's not all there is in a product. Uh, if you only make products that solve problems, uh, we'd live in a very sad world, a, a world of very sad products. We want to live in a world of, of um, you know, products that are more than pro pro problem solving, they, they should be beautiful and um, uh, create a, I think what we are looking for are products that, um, we start identifying with, um, and that's the kind of quality we're talking about. And I, but I think um, it 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 helps to think about that quality as a function as well. That's yeah. equally a function exactly. as its performance. Uh, and and I, I think that's more or less what I tried to say in this quote, or or what you you referred to. Um, so it, it it is really important to think about the. You know other values and qualities of a product than than just the, the things you could 
you could put on a checklist of what the thing has to fulfill. Um, yeah, then that, yeah, that's what, what full experience yeah. distinguishes uh, products and gives them gives them a soul and gives them life identity. Um, I mean, we in, in in furniture design, interestingly, we give products names. Um, it's a funny thing. Um, but um, I, I quite like it because it says that uh, furniture are their cr creatures, their characters uh, mm. in a way, and um, that we fall in love with. You know? Yeah, you, you fall in love with them, and, and uh, in the end, you know, let's face it, you live with them. They they become yeah. your companions. Your they they share your house. Uh, you treat them. Um, you care mm. for them, uh, and so on. And if if, if all that happens, this form of identification, relationship with an object, then we have a sustainable ecological object because then you care for this thing, you keep it, you repair it if it breaks, you pass it on to the next generation and so on, you love it. Um, so yeah. that's the best, um, that's the best um, kind of quality a product can have. No, definitely. And it's, it's easier to reach this kind of goal with, with I suppose, with furniture you know, because it's something that usually we keep for many years and we yeah we with uh, yeah with electronics uh, the, you know they get oh, updated sorry. quickly with with fashion i mean i i think even in fashion um and i mean don't get me wrong i'm i'm, I'm not against fa the idea of fashion as a seasonal fashion i think it's, mm. it's fantastic i enjoy it um but i think that uh, all of all of you and all of you know everyone um you have some 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 things in your wardrobe that um you want to keep forever and you you uh, you know you you they, they become your second skin uh, or it's something that when you you put it on it's uh, you know it it's you uh, and 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 so it's it's those things that um even though it was maybe originally when it was designed and when you bought it, it was just a fashionable item, maybe just for one season, but then you start to, like you say, you fall in love with it, you, you, it becomes part of you, your identity of your life, and therefore you, you, every, you know, every, every so often you, you wear it and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Constantine, you have been very generous with your time. Yeah, I've, I've um, been I've been w looking at my watch, and I, I, I we we need yeah. we we need to um, wrap it up but, now. <laughs> very good. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. thank you very much. You have been it has been a great pleasure to have you with us, and we hope that in the future you can visit in Madrid and come personally to the university. That could be very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I look forward yeah, to, yeah. to being and, um, here. Yeah. I, I'm sure that it has been very interesting for the students and although you haven't seen many, many, many people joining now, we're going to have it um, recorded and I'm sure they will, they will use it. So Great. Very interesting. Okay. Nice. Thank um, you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks thanks you and everyone who's been involved in, in this also preparation of the project when, um, I mean, uh, we, we didn't follow the, the exact script of your, um, PowerPoint, <laughs> but uh, but I, I do appreciate the work you put into it. it was, uh, Very good. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Yeah. All Thank right. you so much, Constantine. Great. Thank you, everyone.